Mighty Networks is a great platform for online courses and community. In this video, you'll learn how to create a waitlist for Mighty Network courses. That way, when your course registration opens, you'll already have a list of interested folks to reach out to. I'm Marcia Chadley with the Creative Life Center. I enjoy demystifying technology so that you feel comfortable connecting online. Mighty Networks is one of my favorite tools. I really like what they offer and how they do business, so I am an affiliate for the Mighty Networks program. Mighty Networks does not have a built-in support for a waitlist, so I developed this waitlist workaround that's easy for you to use. You can use it in any network that uses Mighty Network courses or even with Mighty Network groups. Later in the video, I'm going to talk to you about how you can automate it even further if you connect your Mighty Network to an email software package like MailChimp or Constant Contact or some other package using Zapier. Now that's optional, but it's something you can do to automate the process. We're inside my Mighty Network, so I can show you a wait list right there. My Mighty Network is public, so you're welcome to come in and look around and see things for yourself in person. You'll note in the left navigation pane that I have renamed groups to be resources and courses to be programs. So what we're looking at right now is a list of all the Mighty Network courses that I have available called programs in my network. And at the top of the list is a wait list. I created a private Mighty Network course that people could join that is the wait list for an upcoming course I'm going to have. And what I wanted to do was to make an area that people felt like I'm joining a wait list. I'm not joining a course, I'm joining the wait list. So some things I did to make that happen is I included wait list as the first word in the title. And I actually had to abbreviate my title a little bit because there's a limit to the length of a title in a Mighty Network course. And then I said, get ready as part of the description below. So I use those kind of verbal clues. I also put a clock in as the icon picture there. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why I chose to make a private course rather than a public course or even a free paid course. Any of those would have let people come inside fairly easily. I didn't want to make it a public course because people could actually get in too easily. They could get in and look around without ever having to join the course, and I wouldn't know that they wanted to be on the wait list. I could have made a free paid course, but I didn't like the way the buttons looked. If you look down here below, here's a course with a fee. If it was free, it would say free up here. And I think it says pay or buy or purchase. That sounded too much like someone was joining the course. Whereas if I used a private course, it says request access. It's like they're requesting access to the wait list. If you click the more details, so we're in here with a member who is not yet a member of this wait list. They come in here to your courses. They'll click more details on the wait list. It has a request access button talks about and uh, gives a description. I included a short description of what the course is going to be. And then I said to use the request access button to join the wait list, be the first to hear when registration is open and available. So I could scroll back up here and click this request access, or they could also just right away request access here. So let's see what happens when you do that. They're getting this message that their request has been received and someone's gonna let them in. Now as a host, I'm gonna get a notification, you can see it right up here at the top of my notifications, that someone wants to join that video tour class, that wait list. So I click on the notification, it opens up the list of people who wanted to come in, and all I need to do is approve that person. They're being sent an email that lets them know that they can join. And if I go in and look as the host of this network, I'll be able to see that they've now joined. They are already in. When the person who requested to join the wait list comes back into the network and looks at their programs or courses, if that's what you're calling them, they'll see that they've already joined the wait list. They're also able to get inside and see what I put up inside. Now I purposely made this as simple as possible. 
This is meant to be a wait list, not a course. I don't have any topics. I have no events. I have one single post. And actually, I'm the only one who's allowed to post in this space. Everybody can comment on this post, but it keeps things very simple. I want to let them know that they're on the wait list. I want to let them know what happens when registration opens. And in this case, I'm going to post details here inside the waitlist and also send them an email to their inbox. So a little bit later in the video, I'm going to talk to you about what you can do to send an email to them. I ask them a question because I want to gather some information before they even get into the course about what they're looking for. Because it's a Mighty Network course, there's a table of contents. And I'm not able to get rid of that, but I can rename it. So I renamed it to resources because I knew there was some information that I wanted to provide to people along with this course, kind of extra side information. And so I just put some of that in here right now. So if they're on the waiting list and they want to look at that, they can. If you were making a wait list out of a Mighty Network group, it would look very similar, but you don't have to worry about the table of contents, so you don't even have to have that in there. To make this wait list work as automatically as possible, I've connected Mighty Networks to my software program, which is MailChimp, using Zapier. So this is the Zap I set up. I already have Zapier set up. It knows about my Mighty Network. It knows about my MailChimp. And I can set up different zaps that connect the two. In this case, when someone joins the wait list Mighty Network course, I want to tag them in my MailChimp program and add them to the list if they're not already on it, so that once the course opens, I can send them an email. So I set up a new zap. I'm going to choose Mighty Networks. And the event I want to choose is new member. Then I set up my account. I make sure I choose the right Mighty Network I have hooked up. And I set up the trigger, which is not when they join the network, but when they join the course. And you can test the trigger. I want to set up a filter because I want to um, filter this. I don't want it to be when they join any course. I want them to join the specific waitlist courses when this tag gets set up. So I'm going to say I want to continue only if the course ID is, and then this is the course ID for my waitlist course. The way to find the course ID for any course or group that you're using, because it could also be um, a group ID, is to look at the URL when you're inside your course. So open your course in the browser. If you look at the URL, you're gonna see a string of numbers somewhere in that URL. That's the course ID that you wanna use here. Okay. Now, sometimes this says that the zap would not have continued, but it always works. So I'm not sure what that is. I think it just doesn't test that very well. So that's what the action that's gonna trigger this when someone joins this specific course. And then what I want to do is I want to update a subscriber in MailChimp. So I'm going to choose, you know, choose your mail cert, mail program, what you want to do. I want to add or update a subscriber, set it up, make sure it's connected to my account. And then what I want to do is I want to, I choose my audience. This is all based specifically on MailChimp. It may vary if you use constant contact or something else, but you say, where is this happening? And what I want to do is I want to add a tag. That's the MailChimp word whenever anyone joins this list. And I'm going to use the names of people to, to make sure I'm tagging the right person. And then again, I can test this. So that's the zap I'm using so that when someone joins the waitlist Mighty Network course, they automatically get added or updated in my MailChimp email list and they'll have this specific tag. I'll use that later when the registration for my program opens. When I'm ready to open registration for the official course, I take the waitlist Mighty Network course, that private course, I change it from private to secret, so nobody else can see it and join it, but the people are still in there. Then I take the new course that I've just opened registration for, I make it visible. It could be paid, public, private, whatever you want it to be. 
Then I post inside the waitlist course and let people know that registration is open. Here's how you get there. Here's what you do, whatever I want to tell them. I'll also send a similar email out to them using MailChimp, using the tag that Zapier set up for me. And then it's all set and ready to go. Now, as people join the course, I might want to take them off of the wait list. I also might want to clear the wait list out altogether. I've set this up as an internal wait list. If you would prefer to have an external wait list, say you have a paid network, even if it's free paid, and you want people to be able to see, um, have a plan that they could choose from that includes being on the wait list, you could bundle up into an external bundle your membership and this internal private waitlist course. You could use this process for a single course that you're just not ready to open registration for. You could also use it for an ongoing course or an ongoing group that you want to only open the doors at certain times. And so in between times when the doors are open, you have a wait list going and then use that when you open the doors. Have fun using the wait list. Let me know what ideas you think of, what questions you have, and any other things, ways that you use wait lists in your Mighty Network.